to start dating someone and everything is going a little too well. So well that you start worrying for no reason whatsoever. No one could be that perfect. And even if they were, then there's no way they would look twice at you. The only logical explanation is that they aren't as perfect as they pretend to be. Which leaves you plain detective, trying to figure out this catch that you've made. Maybe all those little quirks that you find adorable now are going to drive you crazy in a few months. Maybe she has a dark secret. Heart drugs, or hating dogs, or that one time she killed a man with a stiletto heel in a fit of passionate rage. There's an easy solution if you want to find out who someone really is. Just take an insanely long road trip with them. If you're still together by the end, well, it was definitely meant to be. My girlfriend, Emily, thought that it was a good idea to drive a thousand miles together across the country after we've only been dating for two months. We're both pretty busy with work and don't get much time together, so naturally being locked in a prison cell on wheels for two days was going to be an improvement. The first hundred miles, so far so good, holding hands, singing to the radio together, uncontrollable laughter when she found out that I knew all the words to Skater Boy. Sue me. It's a catchy song. And if the road ended there, and we turned around, we might have lived a long and happy life together. It was when we passed the hitchhiker that everything began to fall apart. Let's give him a ride, Emily said, squeezing my hand. We'll be on this road forever anyway. We don't even know where he's going, I told her. Um, he's probably going to rob us and steal our car. Which is true of everyone you don't know. And most of the people you do, as far as I'm concerned. The hitchhiker's pressed suit didn't reassure me either. That just meant he had successfully robbed someone before, which actually made him even more dangerous. The man didn't even have a sign or anything. He was just sitting by the freeway ramp, spastically waving his thumb like he was guiding an airplane to land. It was my turn to drive, though, and I sailed right past. Emily and I started bickering after that. She thought that I wasn't compassionate, and I thought she was reckless. It took about ten minutes before she finally dropped it, although it wasn't because she had conceded. Hey, look, there's another one. Sitting by the side of the road, waving his thumb like it was the end of the world. It wasn't another one, though. It was the same guy. I'm sure of it. Only this time, he had been out here 
at least the way he looked, like he had been out there for a few days. His suit was streaked with dirt. His hair was greasy. There was a desperate strain in his face like a proud man trying to conceal his embarrassment. It wasn't just my imagination, either. Emily recognized him, too. How do you think he got here so fast, she wondered. I don't know. And I don't care, I said. This trip is supposed to be about us, so let's not get distracted. My car blew past him, and I stayed the course. We argued again, and when we agreed to drop at the argument just slithered into new topics. She hated my music. I hated how judgmental she was. I was controlling. She was picking fights over nothing. It was getting worse until we saw something that shut us both up real fast. The hitchhiker. Again, another twenty miles down the road, the bottom part of his shirt and jacket were shredded, and blood was soaking through a concealed stomach wound. He was stumbling along the side of the road, weaving erratically, wandering onto the highway at times before pitching off to the side. Emily could not believe that I didn't stop. I couldn't believe she still wanted me to. She kept yelling that he was hurt, needed help. She refused to even acknowledge how weird it was that he kept getting ahead of us. She almost caused an accident by grabbing the wheel when I refused to turn around. We drove for the next fifty miles in silence. I turned the radio back on, but she snapped it off immediately. It wasn't until I pulled off for gas that we saw him again, face down on the side of the road, shirt and jacket gone, long, even, bloody gashes from his shoulders all the way down his back, almost like bear claws or something. I stopped the car and parked behind him. Emily jumped out and knelt beside the body. She looked up at me with uncomprehending rage burning behind her eyes, like this somehow was my fault. He's dead, she said, standing up. Can I call this into the police, or is that too much of an inconvenience for you? I nodded. Absolutely numb. I filled up on gas while she waited with the body until the police arrived. They asked us a few questions, but neither Emily nor I felt comfortable explaining that this wasn't the first time we had seen him. They took our information and let us get back on the road. After about fifteen minutes, the car was silent. For a long time after that, it was starting to get dark, and I was suggesting places to spend the night, but Emily just shrugged and stared out the window. At the rate we were going, we'd be breaking up by the end of the trip and I wanted to be over as soon as possible. I just kept driving. Long after
after the sun went down. Emily fell asleep around midnight, but I kept going. She was so beautiful like that, and everything was going so well before this. It was just so frustrating that a random event that neither of us could predict would destroy us like this. By 2 a.m., I was getting real tired, but I decided not to give up. Maybe if she woke up and we were already there, then she'd see how hard I had worked for her. Maybe then we'd still have a chance to patch things up. I caressed her hand. She returned the pressure. I flirted with the thought that Everything was going to be okay, at least until she woke up and started screaming. There wasn't any safe shoulder to get off the highway, so I had no choice but to keep going. She shut up quick enough, but it was still about ten seconds of hysterical breathing. she could explain what was going on behind you in the back seat. I glanced backward, then at the road, then behind me again. The hitchhiker was in the back seat, naked, filthy, covered with black blood and old wounds. His elbows rested on his knees as he leaned toward us, evidently still alive as he cocked his head to regard me curiously. Get off the road! Emily started screaming again. I, I can't get him out. Did you go back? What's he doing here? I don't know. Open the door or something. I slowed down gradually and put my flashers on to warn the car behind me. The hitchhiker reached around behind Emily and grabbed her by the throat. I slammed my fist into his arm and felt something give way under the soft rod. Tell another. 
never saw what had happened. And that was my plan. It was a good plan. Oh.